Hello and welcome to the special edition of the State of the Fleet Industry video series produced by Automotive Fleet Magazine. And this video series is designed to put a spotlight on key leaders in the fleet management industry. And today I have the honor to interview Kelly Hatley, Senior Service Advisor, National Service Department for Enterprise Fleet Management. And today Kelly and I are gonna be talking about five trends that are occurring in the maintenance industry and what their impact is going to be on operating costs. So with that, I'd like to thank you, Kelly, for joining us and uh, thank you for accepting this invitation. I appreciate the invitation. Thank you, Mike. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, and one of the trends that comes to my mind at least, um, uh, uppermost, is this emergence of more electric vehicles in fleet operation. And you know this is going to be happening because when you look at the OEM product pipelines, there are a lot of EVs that are going to be introduced in the next several years. And a lot of those are being geared specifically for the commercial fleet market. And, and I'm wondering if you could discuss that point. And you know, also what's going to be happening during this transitional period, you're really gonna have a two-tiered maintenance system, one for internal combustion engines, one for uh, electric vehicles. So what, what are the ramifications that fleet managers need to be taking into account? Yeah, this is an interesting development. And like you said, there are many, many models in the pipeline and those models range from light duty all the way up to heavy duty. And in the beginning years, when, when these models are out on the road, the, we expect the dealerships to be on the leading edge from a service and maintenance perspective. Uh, even after the base warranty period expires, though, it's going to take a long time for the aftermarket vendors in the independent shops to catch up with this technology. There will be a, a large investment they'll have to make in training and tools and equipment. And so, Unlike with internal combustion engines, we could expect EVs to re be returning to the dealer for service even after the base warranty period has expired. Another interesting factor, there are a lot of different considerations that fleets need to consider. And one of those is the, the fewer number of fluids and filters and moving parts on an EV. That will result in less frequent maintenance intervals, uh, fewer services being performed during maintenance intervals, and with fewer moving parts, one would hope that the reliability would also increase, maybe even the lifespan of the vehicle. And, uh, you know, and Mike, speaking of uh, lifespan, an interesting thing to consider will be the cost of the battery and how that factors into the optimal cycling point. And one would need to, to weigh what would the resale value of the vehicle be uh, if, if I replace the battery versus if I don't replace the battery and how will that affect the value. And one other thing related to maintenance, though, is the consideration going back to how, how most services will be redirected back to the dealerships. Fleets that are dispersed will need to consider where they can get the vehicle serviced. It may be more ideal for those fleets that, um, that stay in a more centralized location. Right. Yeah, so you, you're absolutely right. So, you know, with fewer moving parts, you're really looking at uh, uh, preventative maintenance geared towards those wear items, uh, tires, uh, windshield wiper plates, and so on. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, another area is that total cost of ownership, as you mentioned. You know, it's going to require totally different calculations and, and a new um, variable that's going to come into the equation, which is going to be battery life. You know, when do you change that? Do you change it? Um, just prior or do you change or do you just remarket the vehicle towards the end of the battery life? So those are interesting uh, uh, implications that we're all going to be working through in the coming years. You know, an, another key maintenance trend is um, is the proliferation of advanced driver assistance systems, otherwise known as ADAS. And we're starting to see that in more and more fleet vehicles and with each subsequent model year, that percentage of vehicles uh, that are incorporating ADAS uh, is increasing. And this is having ramifications in terms of maintenance. Uh, and I'm wondering if you could address that and, and talk about what those ramifications are. Yeah, ADAS is a great advancement in driver safety, but it, it is already having some ramifications. So one of the biggest things that we're seeing right now with ADAS equipped vehicles is this trend in which Previously simple and straightforward and relatively low cost repairs are now becoming more complex and costly. So I'll give you an example. Um, on a non-ADAS equipped vehicle, a windshield replacement would be fairly straightforward and in the grand scheme of things, 
fairly low cost. However, with an ADAS equipped vehicle that has a forward facing camera built into the rear view mirror with a windshield replacement, that camera now has to be repositioned, recalibrated, and in some cases, an advanced alignment system uh, will need to be performed as well. So in the past, you would never have had to align your vehicle with a windshield replacement, but now you do. And it's not just windshields too. There are also proximity sensors behind bumper covers and cameras built into mirrors. So it, it can affect a lot of different things and that, that can lead to higher repair costs. Hopefully though, through fewer collisions if, with the collision avoidance systems, hopefully this leads to fewer accidents, fewer collisions and lower collision repair costs. And hopefully the two balance one another out. Um, one thing to consider though, too, is with ADAS, we're adding a lot of new components to vehicles that never existed before. And as the component count increases, the likelihood of component failure is going to correlate with that. Mm -hmm. And ADAS, it's an option on a lot of vehicles now, but over time with technology like this, it tends to become more and more standard as new models come out. Yeah, I agree. And, and, and Go ahead. Uh, one, one factor too is just the, the human factor of it too. With increased driver safety, you just can't put a, a dollar amount on that. That's very true. And and as you mentioned, you know, with decreased uh, collisions and accidents, uh, you know, hopefully those savings offset whatever increases you have in the overall maintenance of those vehicles. Just like with the EVs, you know, uh, fewer mm -hmm. moving parts is going to offset uh, some of that higher initial acquisition cost. Uh, and also, you know, the potential of longer service life with EVs. So um, this gets into a third area um, that uh, is going to be impacting all of us. It's not new. It's this ongoing tech shortage that's uh, occurring in the marketplace. Uh, but as we've been talking about, there, there's going to be increased complexity in fleet maintenance. Uh, it's going to require a higher skill set on the part of these uh, technicians. So um, I'm wondering if you could address that. Um, uh, with the implications both on a near-term and long-term basis with this ongoing technician shortage? Yes. So in the near term, we can expect to see increased downtime as technicians become harder and harder for shops to find. It's going to extend the wait time to get vehicles into shops. And also it will translate into a dollar amount too, because as it, the law of supply and demand, as there are fewer technicians in the job market, shops will have to offer higher wages in order to attract the best technicians, which will then lead to higher shop labor rates. So that's in the near term. And over the long term, Mike, I would say as we see more and more baby boomers continue to retire and they're being replaced by fewer and fewer young people, uh, that this trend doesn't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. Although my hope is that as we mentioned earlier with things like EVs and ADAS systems, vehicles are becoming more tech technology heavy. And I'm hoping that with the technology increase of vehicles, I'm hoping that that sparks an interest and taps into a whole new group of young people and maybe they'll show more interest in becoming technicians. Right. You, you go to a maintenance shop and you see the techs working there. Invariably, there's a, a laptop on the fender of that vehicle uh, that where they're doing the diagnostics. But that also brings up this whole point of diagnostics also with the increased complexity of the vehicles, with the increased amount of electronics. There is more diagnostic um, investment of equipment that uh, shops need to make. And, and that raises the skill set. You know, in the old days, it used to be if you throw enough parts at a problem, you're going to fix it. Uh, now with the diagnostics, you're able to zero in on exactly where those problem areas are. Any comments or, or uh, other things you'd like to add to this uh, increased uh, diagnostics capabilities? Yeah, so you make a very good point, and that could actually compound the problem with the technician shortage. So if there are fewer technicians to go around at the same time as vehicles are becoming more and more complex, uh, now you're, you're taking that number of technicians who can address certain high-tech issues, that number is becoming even smaller still. And so that could compound certain issues depending on the problem the vehicle is having. So yeah, it could exacerbate the issue. Yes. Now, a, a fourth um, maintenance trend that's, that's growing, it's not been new, but it's, it's really accelerated uh, because of the pandemic, and that's the emergence of mobile maintenance services. Uh, and you're seeing a lot of companies offering that maintenance option. You see it with OEMs, you see it with dealers, uh, 
third party providers and so on. So if I'm a fleet manager, what are the pros and cons that you think I should be taking into account uh, in selecting a mobile service uh, provider? Yeah, and you're absolutely right. Dealers, OEMs, national chains, they're all showing a, a heightened interest in mobile service. So there are pros and cons to consider. So mobile service is great for reducing downtime, but in certain situations, though, it's not the right fit for every fleet. Uh, it, it's, a good, it's a good fit for a fleet that has a centralized location where the vehicles all return to one centralized location because then the mobile service can come out and service multiple vehicles after hours or on weekends or while a driver has a day off. That way the service can be performed after hours instead of during operating hours and that, you know, then the vehicle has to be taken out of service. So downtime is a huge benefit, uh, reduced downtime. But then also on the flip side of that, though, is the higher repair cost. So with mobile service, the shops have a heavier investment in mobile service because they have to equip a truck, a dedicated vehicle, which is basically a shop on wheel, a whole set of equipment dedicated for just, remember, just one technician. That's a heavy investment for the shop. Sure. Also, the nature of mobile service changes the way labor is calculated because now the technician has to drive to the location. If he diagnoses an issue that he, and he doesn't have a part in stock on the truck, he may now have to go and get the part and come back. And in some situations, the, the client may be on the clock, so to speak, for all that time, increasing the amount of time for repair. So there's usually some increased cost there, but fleets would need to consider the value of the downtime versus does that offset the higher cost and what is their value, what is their downtime worth? Yeah, again, we get into these offset issues uh, or offset considerations. So those are great points mm -hmm. that fleet managers need to take into account. You know, a, a final um, and our fifth uh, maintenance trend that we wanted to examine is the changes that have occurred as a result of the pandemic, you know, that's really caused a lot of uh, shifts and new maintenance protocols in particular with sanitation um, uh, protocols and so on. Could you kind of give a summary on some of these key uh, maintenance trends that have emerged as a result of the pandemic? And then also kind of give a forecast as to which of those new maintenance protocols you think are gonna continue once the pandemic does come to an end? Yeah, so, so the response among vendors has been great for the pandemic. Uh, we've seen a, a increase in the number of online appointment features and smartphone apps where people can not only make an appointment but also check out and pay on their phone. Um, that was all done in an effort to make the whole transaction a no-touch service. However, that also could be a huge convenience factor as well because everything's done right there on the phone. And shops have also responded by creating dedicated curbside drop-off and pickup areas in their parking lot and parking off a certain area. Also, we've seen an increase in the number of drive-through services where the, in the vehicle, I'm sorry, the driver actually stays in the vehicle while the service is performed, never gets out. That way it's a no-touch service. And that might, that I could see continuing on after the pandemic, just from a driver convenience perspective, but also from a fleet perspective, if, if it's a driver that has a mobile office, let's say, set up in their vehicle where they, you know, they've got their laptop, they've got their briefcase, they, they're kind of a rolling office, so to speak, mm -hmm. instead of having to take all that into the waiting room with them, or maybe just sit idle while the vehicle is serviced, with drive through service, they could stay in the vehicle and remain productive while the, while the service is being performed. So a huge convenience factor. And uh, I can see those types of trends staying around long after the pandemic is over. And, and who knows, Mike, maybe the mobile service folks will pair up with the smartphone app folks and maybe we'll see an Uber like type of service come out where you can summon a technician. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I see all of those uh, potential trends continuing far beyond um, the um, end of this pandemic. And we've only covered five maintenance trends. Either, I mean, this conversation could go on and uh, hopefully we mm -hmm. might be able to continue this at a future time, but we have reached our allotted time. And I wanna thank you, Kelly, for uh, a great conversation, a lot of great insights that you've offered there. And I wanna thank you again for joining us. I appreciate it. This was great. Thank you, Mike. You're quite welcome.